All right, guys, welcome back to the early line here on Sports Grid. Davis Maddock and Donnie Wright side with you. We did the entire show yesterday with one Mr. Mark Zeno. So we are uh, we are going to talk about the Super Bowl. We are going to go through a Super Bowl recap because, Donnie, you didn't get to fire your takes off on the program yesterday. So this is your space. Kansas City Chiefs, 25. San Francisco 49ers, 22. What is your overall reaction to Super Bowl 58? The simple reaction to me, again, is you're getting caught up being a handicapper most of the time and saying, what do you believe, Davis, is going to happen in these football games? Coming into the Buffalo, we're just going to talk Kansas City right now. Coming into that Buffalo Bills game on the road, I said, now's the time that the Bills should be able to rise up. But I said to myself, banged up defense for the Buffalo Bills. You still have Patrick Mahomes. They picked up a victory the week before. We know the struggles in the playoffs for the Buffalo Bills going up against the Kansas City Chiefs. But this game was a road game, which Patrick Mahomes had never played before. Did they play all that great? Not necessarily, but a late missed field goal by Tyler Bass of the Buffalo Bills sent the Kansas City Chiefs on to the AFC Championship game. So then we start talking about the AFC Championship game. Now you're going to get the Buffalo, excuse me, the Buffalo Bills game and the Miami Dolphins game behind you. Two banged up defenses. Okay, Mahomes was able to do some things and get victories here but that was going to stop in the AFC championship game Lamar Jackson had an MVP season they'll run the football their defense is completely healthy they're rested coming off the bye week two weeks previous and haven't left the state of Maryland in over five to six weeks here so they were rested and ready 17-10 final Mahomes moves on so I say to myself Davis that Monday morning and I said you know what Patrick Mahomes going into the big game. I was so angry on the set, Ben and I going back and forth, that I said, I don't even want a handicap at this point. One team has Patrick Mahomes. Nobody else has him. Forget the handicaps. Forget the yardage. It's just going to be the Kansas City Chiefs. Now, as the week went on, and also the week that we did in Las Vegas, I started to say to myself, Donnie, don't get caught up in this. Don't do this. You know the San Francisco 49ers are superior from start to finish. Yes, Patrick Mahomes on one side, but I have a better total offense on one side and a defense that can match up and get pressure on Patrick Mahomes on the other side. And also, Davis, I was coming into the Super Bowl with this. Kyle Shanahan has been in two previous Super Bowls. I didn't think he was aggressive enough in the last one against the Kansas City Chiefs. He won't make that mistake in this football game. Now, we'll get to some of the big coaching decisions. But for me, Davis, to be honest, I looked at this game and said, I understand people that just said they have Mahomes and the other team doesn't. But I didn't want to get caught up in that. And then I took another loss on the Super Bowl because it was Patrick Mahomes and nobody else on the other side. I mean, ultimately, it comes down to how everyone felt in that overtime period when it's third and four, the 49ers Mm -hmm. don't convert, and they decide to go for the field goal. Everyone, every person on earth, every 49er player, everyone holding a 49er ticket, what did they think? They said, oh, well, I'm not going to win. I lose here. Everyone, everyone knew. Not one person in that stadium, Kyle Shanahan, Brock Purdy, George Kittle, They all knew. They all knew when Purdy sailed that ball on third and four because Chris Jones got the pressure. They knew what was going to happen, right? And the Chiefs fans, do you think any Chiefs fan, anyone holding a Chiefs ticket, do you think they were sitting there biting their nails, nervous? Do you think anyone looked at that offense and said, oh, well, they're not going to get it here, right? You know, they line up on fourth and one. They hand the ball off to Pacheco on third and one. It's fourth and one. They're sitting there. Was anyone going, oh, well, well, they're probably not going to get this, right? They probably are going to, and the game will just be over. No, everyone knew they were going to convert that fourth down. Kelsey, by the way, I I, I, I probably watched every game of his career, I, I would think. Um, I think that play that he made on the third and seven, where he ran across the middle and got it up to the 11-yard line, that might be the best play of his career because he got open so quickly. He caught it in stride. He made the guy miss. It's about as good as it's going to get from Travis Kelsey. I, and, and look, I, I don't think that anyone who had either side of this game was wrong or right. It, it literally is about as coin flip of a game as you're going to get a game that went down. It it went to, it went to literal overtime. They had to play a whole overtime period to find a winner. I think if they play this game, you know, a hundred times, I think maybe you get it 51, 49. But at the end of the day, you're right. One of the teams has Patrick Mahomes and one of the teams has Brock Purdy. And and actually, one of the teams has Andy Reid and one of them has Kyle Shanahan. And uh, I, I actually, let's talk a little bit about the overtime here because I was, I was speculating yeah. on yep. this yesterday because of the whole argument since the game has been, ah, oh, well, do you take it first? Do you, do you take it second? What's right? Uh, Brian Burke over at ESPN did uh, did a study where he just like ran through simulations and basically found it's 51-49 
based on if you get it or you receive, so no real differentiation to be made. This was my thought, that actually you were at a disadvantage getting the ball first because if you score a touchdown or a field goal and, and you put the team in a spot where they lose if they don't get a first down, you're actually forcing the other team to play more optimally. You're forcing them to go for every fourth down, which puts them in a better position to acquire points. What do you think about that? Yeah, and, and that, that was the whole thing. And let me just set the day up for us, Davis, because we did Super Bowl Live in studio, and the boys were cooking all day long. It was so much fun. I know you guys were watching out there, really enjoying it along with us. But we were watching the game outside the studio in the first half, and then we came and did the halftime and also post-game. But we didn't have the sound on in the studio, obviously, while Gabe was in there, Joe, and also Pharrell. So they were going back and forth. But I was watching the game a lot with them, particularly, Davis, in that overtime period. Now, we couldn't hear Jim Nance or Tony Romo, which is why the next day I wanted to watch the Super Bowl telecast to see what the announcers were saying. But as soon as that happened, I remember turning around because you couldn't really tell who won the toss or lost it because there was no sound. So I said, oh, look at this. They go, no, 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 no. San Francisco actually won that toss and is going to take the football. I said, this is unbelievable. Like, of course, in the old theories there for the playoffs, you want the ball first because there's a chance the other team won't even get the football. But since they changed it, it was ludicrous to take that football first. And I've said it multiple times on shows. Back in 1998, college football put the institution in of the overtime period, which was never in there before. Our first, actually our second game of the season in 1998, Davis, we actually went to overtime. Our coach took the football first because he wasn't understanding the rules at the time. Now, we actually ended up winning that football game, but it's the wrong decision. And I know it's not the same circumstances as college football, but the ability to know what you need here. And the fact of the matter is, once that played out, I said, this might be one of the worst coaching decisions I've ever seen. 58 years of Super Bowls, this might be the worst. Because it's not the fact that, okay, you're playing for the third possession, which credit Kyle Shanahan on that. He never even got to a third possession, so congratulations on actually playing for that here. But you're giving Mahomes exactly what he needs. If you drove down the football field, Davis, and scored a touchdown for the 49ers, Mahomes goes, cool. I got four downs to work this down the field, and I know I need a touchdown at this point. And also, if you were Kyle Shanahan saying, I'm playing for that third possession, Davis, why on third and four are you throwing the ball? And also, if it still was fourth and four, why aren't you going for that? If you're playing for that third possession, you know you need a touchdown here. But just giving Mahomes what he needs, and also, as it turned out, you saw the 49ers down three points on fourth and one on their own side of the field. Go for it. Why? Because there was no other alternative. They couldn't even punt the football. They knew they had to go for it. Mahomes kept the football and ran it through. Now, the interesting part of this as well is, let's just see, Davis, if this played out exactly the way the 49ers thought it was going to be. Niners drive down and score a touchdown. Chiefs drive down and score a touchdown. You heard Patrick Mahomes in the postgame press conference. because goes, if that was a scenario, we were going for it on two-point conversion. They were never even going to get a chance to get a third possession. I was so beside myself in Studio Davis when I figured exactly what happened on the coin toss. You can't take the football first. So that... That was that was the the big revelation. The Ringer published a piece yesterday where they talked to players on both teams. And I mean, look, the 49ers coaching staff did not come off real great in those conversations because Kyle Juszczyk is like, dude, we didn't even know the rules. And then the defensive players were like, we did we look like we have not talked about this. And then they were talking to the Chiefs players, and Chris Jones is like, Oh yeah, we practiced this in training camp you know, five months ago, we knew this was the rule. And then the offensive players were saying, not only did we know the rules, we had practiced extra two point plays this week, because we knew that in this spot, we were going to go for two. Uh, so, you know, I mean, like, I guess maybe that's a little bit of an example of those, uh, those extra 1% edges that take you from being the second best team in the NFL to the best team in the NFL. I, I think, Ultimately, I'm not killing Shanahan for the decision to receive. It's like half a dozen, you know, six of one, half a dozen of the other there. Like, I think I, I do actually think we could argue this. We could do a three hour show, and I don't know if we would reach a real conclusion on what was right and what was wrong. I'm killing Shanahan for two things. One, I'm killing Shanahan for messing up the clock at the end of the first half, where had he used his timeouts, he could have gotten the ball back with about 45 seconds left to get a field goal. And I'm killing him for the way that final possession overtime ended the pass on third and four, not going forward on fourth and four. What, what do we always say? You do not beat Patrick Mahomes with field goals. And that's, that's what they did. 
No, and you're exactly correct. Like the thought process of the 49ers were driving. And again, I had the 49ers minus one and a half at a couple parlays just tied in with them winning the football game. I'm sitting there pumping my fist. Go, this is a great drive here. McCaffrey had the big play from midfield to sort of rumble down to the 26-yard line. The running game was working. Everything was setting up fine. Even that Kyle Juszczyk catch on a nice pass by Brock Purdy, a questionable play, but under the new rules, was officially a catch. You go, they're going to score a touchdown. At least put the pressure on the Kansas City Chiefs. But you're right about it. Whoever was in that stadium, Patrick Mahomes, Andy Reid are watching as the viewing audience. The minute it was fourth down, the field goal came out. You said advantage Patrick Mahomes. He has four downs to get 10 yards and move that football down the field. And they went all the way down. And by the way, your point of that Travis Kelsey play over the middle, I'm telling you right now, he's been around the league a long time. I'm not so sure I ever saw a faster route by Travis Kelsey turning on the afterburners when he sort of brought that up the left sideline. That was a great player. And also, having one catch for one yard at the half, having an extended halftime, and Andy Reid coming out going, you know what? We had a bad Super Bowl halftime last year in the first half. We turned on the Jets in the second half. They did the same thing, Davis. They were completely different offense in the second half, which meant they got Kelsey involved. I was thoroughly impressed by that, but I still can't get over. The 49ers, once again, the better football team, a double-digit lead, Davis, in the Super Bowl, and they couldn't beat the Chiefs. <laughs> your your intuition is right. NFL Next Gen Stats tweeted out that that was the fastest ball speed Travis Whoa. Kelsey had been recorded at since 2015. Since 2015. We're back here in a second on the early line. All right, guys, we are back on the early line here on Sports Grid. Davis Maddock and Donnie Wrightside here with you on the program this morning. We'll also be back with you tomorrow morning. BSS, Ben Scott Steven. He didn't want to hang out with us. He's he's sick of it. He's like, look, I'm tired of talking about the mm-hmm. Super Bowl. I I'm not tired of talking about the Super Bowl. I uh, I want to pick Donnie's. Uh, I want to pick Donnie's brain on another aspect of this game. Let's say Donnie, the game just ends in in regular time, right? That uh, you know the Chiefs don't get the field goal they need. Whatever uh, they they make some incomplete pass on fourth down. The 49ers kneel it out. Who do you think wins Super Bowl MVP for the 49ers? I, I've been arguing this, uh, you know, in the in the, the final. 48 hours. Uh, I'm not going to, I'm not going to bias your opinion. I, I am, I'm curious who you had. Juwan Jennings would have been an interesting one, but I still do think it probably would have been a fight between Brock Purdy and Christian McCaffrey. The fact that McCaffrey was on the receiving end of that screen pass and was able to get in, still went well over 100 yards combined rushing and receiving in that football game, but it probably would have been Brock Purdy. Now, also, it is really interesting how it lined up because at the end of that game, and I'm not talking about regulation, That key play, Davis, which we didn't talk about, which was a third down play at the two-minute warning, which if you throw a pass or run the football and get that first down, the 49ers run that clock out, kick a field goal, and win that game. Exactly. It would have been interesting to see who actually had that key play. Was it a great pass by Brock Purdy? Was it another catch by Juwan Jennings to get that key first down? Or if they hand it off to McCaffrey and he rumbled five yards for that game-clinching first down? That would have been interesting to me, but it really was up in the air. I don't know if they would have gave it to Jennings here, even though he had a touchdown receiving and passing, similar to what you would have saw Hines Ward back when the Pittsburgh Steelers beat the Seattle Seahawks. I do have a feeling it was probably going to Brock Purdy due to that last drive getting them in position, but I do think think it would have been interesting of who actually got that final first down to me Davis who did you think would have had that MVP in their hands you know I actually think it would have been McCaffrey I I, I well mm-hmm. the right winner was Jennings um I if I if I was sitting there yeah, in correct. the audience I was Probably. a sports writer with a vote I I would have voted I would have been Jennings for sure I think the reason why I think it would have been McCaffrey would have been uh, well one I think they would have been way better off converting that third down play setting up a pass to McCaffrey. Spagnolo, man, what a, what a genius play call that was there, setting it up. I, I don't know if you saw this, but uh, one of the reports after the game was that the 49ers expected all the, like most of the blitzing situations to be zone coverage because that's what the Chiefs had done for every single game, all you know, all 19, or I guess 20 games for them for the entire season. And what Spagnolo did was he had McDuffie and Snead on an island with Debo and Ayuk the whole game. They had no safeties over the top. It was all man coverage and blitzing situations. In fact, we saw two spots where it came up. There was one deep shot to Ayuk that uh, McDuffie broke up, and there was the the deep shot, or I guess it wasn't deep. It was like 20 yards to Debo in the end zone that Purdy missed when he actually had beaten his guy, and they reverted on that play. So on that third down play, they went back to the zone. He, he like, reconfused Purdy on that spot. But uh, I, I think McCaffrey would have won. Jennings was the rightful winner. How did the 
prop betting in this game go for you? It was a real mixed bag for me. The McKinnon stuff, the use check stuff, the Noah Gray stuff, all the all the the tertiary guys, the guys who only needed like one or two catches to get there. I hit all of those. But uh, Debo, man, Debo doing nothing in that game just like murdered all of my like same game parlays and correlated stuff because it was all, you know, Debo over 79 and a half combo yards. Debo just won't score a touchdown. That was, that was the real downfall for me. Yeah. By the way, we were watching outside of the studio, getting prepared here, had it on the big screen. And when Debo fell to the ground, there was a hush that came over the room because everybody before this game loved Debo Samuel and rightfully so two weeks to prepare for Kyle Shanahan. We know he's going to get after, he's going to dial up a lot of plays. And we were very excited by that. But the key thing is he came back. He actually, I had a bet in there for over two and a half rushes for Debo, which he got to three, which was in a parlay. But the final leg of that parlay was actually the San Francisco 49ers winning that football game. I actually thought I didn't bet that Christian McCaffrey would go over the 90 and a half rushing yards there. I thought he would get there. That one didn't. But I did like under 68 and a half on Isaiah Pacheco because my game script for me, Davis, was going into that football game. I thought the 49ers would be leading in the fourth quarter and you wouldn't get those extracurricular carries, as I like to say for Isaiah Pacheco. But he did stay under that. I thought Brock Purdy would throw for over one and a half touchdown passes before that game started. And to have them say like, oh, by the way, the 49ers did throw two touchdown passes in that game. Awesome, Davis. I hit that. No, it was actually Juwan Jennings cashing in on one of those. But during the week last week, I said, if we removed all juice from the equation, and then I'm talking about, hey, let's lay off minus five or minus 600. At game time, Christian McCaffrey was a minus 210 price for an anytime touchdown. And I said, I'm going to take that. And I know as handicappers, sometimes you get a little bit, oh, you can't take juice that high. But I said, let me remove the juice and say, what do I know is going to happen in this game? It's going to be Christian McCaffrey scoring a touchdown, and it didn't happen here. I stayed away from the Travis Kelsey props. But you know what the one thing that was interesting to me, Davis, is we didn't talk a lot about this in Las Vegas, that George Kittle didn't practice the week before leading up to that, you know, bye week for the Super Bowl. Then he basically barely practiced on Wednesday and Thursday, getting in a full practice on a late Friday game. I didn't know how he would turn out in the Super Bowl, and it turns out he was certainly ineffective in that one. From a prop perspective, it was an okay game for me, which could have been a lot better if Debo Samuel had scored a touchdown because that was my other touchdown market for me, Davis. Yeah, Kittle, uh, so he injured, this is, uh, again, you know, it's it's kind of these things that are going to get lost to the sands of time yeah. when, you, when you forget these games. So Kittle, in the overtime period, leaves with a shoulder injury he runs back to the locker room i i don't know i don't know what they probably just the trainer probably just looked at it and kittle said brother i i'm going back out there <laughs> but when kittle was not out there his backup braden willis uh played at the university of oklahoma by the way braden willis on a second and nine they get a first down but what happens he commits a holding penalty when George Kittle is in the locker room. His backup commits a holding penalty on Chris Jones. They end up getting backed up, setting up the spot where they end up having to kick the field goal. So it is kind of one of those things that just sort of slips through time. Now, I, I got I to gotta highlight our attention on really this is going to be the most profitable wager in the history of the Kansas City Chiefs. Just commit this to your memory for next season. Big game, right? So home to the Ravens in the regular season road to the Bills in the regular season, any playoff game. Mahomes' rushing attempts in these spots all season, it's about four and a half. Uh, that's, that's just where it sits. You put Pat in a big game, he is going over that number. I, I would have to go back and check this. I would guess if you gave me the criteria and I get to set the criteria as quote-unquote big game, I bet Pat's going over four and a half rushing attempts in those spots like I don't know, 75% of the time or something. Ends up with the 66 rushing yards. He has... um the great run on fourth and one he's got uh, then he had a, like a 20 yard scramble that ended up setting up the winning touchdown to McCall Hardman and and you know I'm not breaking any new ground here but by Sunday morning and everyone everyone was I don't know one person who did not bet Mahomes over four and a half rushing attempts were you on this one I wasn't actually on that, but you're right about the sediment. Like every time they would show Patrick Mahomes over 25 and a half rushing yards, not a single person, Davis, on the set was like, yeah, you know what? Mahomes isn't running here. Like we've been quoting the term a big game runner all season long for Patrick Mahomes if you need it. And also some of that gameplay, Davis, that we talk about, right? And I used this term many times last week. In weeks 10, 11, or 12, right? 
hey, do I want to, on third and four, roll out of the pocket and take on two linebackers to get a first down? No, you don't want to do that early in the season. But in the playoffs and the Super Bowl, you are giving max effort on every single play, and that certainly showed with Patrick Mahomes, who also had the largest, the longest rush in the Super Bowl game. If you would even parlay both of those quarterbacks here to get their numbers together, they did, as Brock Purdy barely went over his rushing total as well. I'm always under the guise here, Davis, when you get into Super Bowls and big game situations, I always like the quarterbacks to be over because if the play is not there to be made, there's no longer, hey, live another day, we'll get it on the next drive. These guys will actually run the football and see what they can do. Neither one wound up with a touchdown in this, but I was not surprised at all that Patrick Mahomes was so active with his legs, a very underrated runner. And also, I did see one of the statistics here in Super Bowl history as a quarterback for rushing yards. It's now Patrick Mahomes by a landslide out there, Davis, as the leader in the clubhouse. Yeah, Mahomes also, I mean, this is just uh, so funny how he's so valuable to the Chiefs franchise and and how, honestly, how sad the history of the Chiefs has been. Mahomes is also the all-time postseason leading rusher for the entire franchise. (laughs) For the entire franchise, he is the the postseason leading rusher. Uh, The Purdy one is actually illustrative of something we talk a lot about here on SportsGrid, which is like the value in getting a good number. Because what was his (laughs) opening rushing total? 11 and a half. He ends up beating that. What was his closing rushing total Sunday morning? 13 and a half does not end up beating that. Yeah, pretty tough if you ended up taking the closing line there. Now, uh, I mean, look, we we haven't even gotten into hot take territory here yet. How are you feeling about Brock Purdy right now? Is Brock Purdy Jimmy Garoppolo? Is he better than Jimmy Garoppolo? What, what, you know, if if Brock Purdy, uh, he's got two years left on his rookie deal. So they got some time. Uh, they got some time to think about that, but just kind of in general, what's your sentiment about Purdy after this game? He's a really good quarterback for the 49ers. Now, I'm not knocking him here, and that sounds what it is, but it's not like say like if you take him and put him on the Panthers, he's a dominating quarterback. In that system, he's a way better version, way better version of Jimmy Garoppolo. So if you're going to keep Kyle Shanahan as your coordinator and surround him with talented weapons, he's going to be a very good quarterback for a long time with the 49ers. Sort of that old school guy, right? Hey, if I have to run, I'll certainly do it, but I'm quick enough to make those decisions and reads in that offense. I don't think anybody, Davis, sat back in that game and goes, man, what a big discrepancy between Mahomes and Brock Purdy. They were going toe-to-toe, and he was going toe-to-toe with maybe what's all said and done going to be the best quarterback in the history of the sport, and that would include Tom Brady. So for myself, the worry of during the week, well, I know Mahomes has been there before and played well. I don't know what I'm going to get out of Brock Purdy. Maybe a shaky performance to start the games in the divisional round and the NFC Championship game, but I thought Brock Purdy was very good in that football game. Yes, he missed a couple throws, should have connected with Debo on that touchdown. Maybe could have got Ayuk on that deep shot. I get it. But in the biggest moments, he was delivering there, Davis. So I was impressed by Brock Purdy, and I think they got themselves a pretty good quarterback moving forward. You know what? I I do, too. I think there's going to be a pretty big overreaction here that's basically just like, oh, you know, it's and it is kind of the same old Shanahan problem of like, okay, you get you have this great team, you get to the big spot and you don't have the guy Mm -hmm. to play you out of your trouble. But you know who also doesn't have the guy to play you out of trouble? Like uh, every other team, I I, I would say, (laughs) like, there's I like my tier rankings would be Mahomes in a tier by himself, then Josh. Lamar and Burrow and Hertz probably would be that next tier. And then, I mean, I think Purdy's probably in that next tier of like Stafford and, uh, you know, Jordan Love and Kirk Cousins and Jared Goff and like, you know, like he's a Trevor Lawrence. Like, would you rather have Brock Purdy or Trevor Lawrence? I, I think you would be kind of fooling yourself if you could definitively say, oh, I definitely like Trevor Lawrence is way better than Brock Purdy. Like, maybe. But I, I don't know. Like, Purdy, I, I think the big difference between Purdy and the other quarterbacks of the Shanahan realm, right? And there's been a lot of them, right? Remember C.J. Beathard and Nick Mullins winning games for the 49ers? Is, is Purdy is actually like a pretty capable deep thrower in a way that the other 49ers quarterbacks were not? I, I, I don't know if I remember one, like, 30-yard frozen rope to George Kittle from Jimmy Garoppolo. But Purdy can make those throws I think uh it's it's just a little bit of the decision making stuff and the true trust of the quarterback like but I I think there's going to be calls this offseason for the 49ers you know make a trade or do x y or z and I I don't think I don't think you do that I think Purdy is is definitely good enough to ride you're basically just to run back 
this season again and say, you know, maybe we get to the big game. Maybe the Chiefs lose to the Bills, and then we just end up smoking the Bills because that is what we do uh, as a team. Guys, that does a, a comprehensive review of the Super Bowl. We are going to go ahead and run at a break here on the program. Got some more hoops coming up, more Super Bowl. Don't go anywhere. Davis Maddox is down the right side with you. <laughs> 